Hi, welcome to episode three of Gun Talk with Carrie. And this episode is going to be called Get a Grip. We told that a few times. <laughs> First, our disclaimer all of the guns we have here are unloaded, been checked, and double checked, and we have no live ammo in the room. Roger that. We're still in Corona crap lockdown, so it's going to be another episode from the couch. Yep. No um, shooting yet. Maybe I'll sneak in some footage of some of the issues we're talking about that cost you time when you're shooting. Yeah. Whether it's in a match or plinking or if a bad guy's coming at you, you don't want to waste time. Right. So um, we're going to start off with my Christmas present that I got late. Um, it's the Dan Wesson Specialist. Sorry, no arms. I'll try not to. Uh, the Dan Wesson Specialist, when I purchased this, I knew that I would have to replace the grips. Well, wait a minute. That's not a cheap gun. No, Didn't it is put, not. Didn't they put good, gun, or good grips on it to begin with? What's the deal? Well, they might be good grips for someone that has huge hands um, and is a big guy, but they're not for me. You mean one size doesn't fit all? No, it doesn't. What's up with that? They're just a little bit too thick. And so what the deal is, is they make them for the average size male. Yeah. Who's what, 5'11", mm -hmm. 180 pounds, um, hands yeah. yoke so big? Yeah, they don't make them for small hands at all. And also, they're, the, the grip is thick, and it's very aggressive. It's got a really rounded profile on it, too. It does. It's not flat. Yeah. So... We're going to go with a smaller grip, and we just wanted to discuss different kinds of grips and let you know that it's an easy fix, it's an easy change. Also, I really don't like this color at all. That's not very girly at all. It's kind it's of boring, kind I have of, to admit. Kind of boring, yeah. So that's going to be a totally different color. The first gun that I got. It took me a year to decide on this gun. This is a Range Officer Compact in 45 ACP. It's a Springfield Armory, right? Yes, Springfield yeah. Armory. So that's an aluminum frame gun. Weighs what, 28, 29 ounces? Yeah. Maybe 20. a little more now because you got the Magwell on Right, it. yeah. So when I first got this, um, it came with these rosewood grips. Here, bring them to the camera. Yeah. Boring. Yeah, kind of boring and not very aggressive at all. I had not started competing when I purchased this. I was still just learning and shooting at the range, and so it wasn't that big a deal. So, but then once I started competing, these were not giving me the sufficient grip on the gun that I needed. What she means is traction on the gun, watching her shoot the gun, her recoil would be almost up to here with the gun because it was moving in her hands this way because of the smoothness of the grips. And we've also added this grip tape on here. And with the improved traction she has on the gun now, it's probably three quarters to a half of what it was because it used to really yeah. fly up in your hands. Mm -hmm. And you've also learned how to shoot better, but those make a huge difference. Who makes yes. those grips? These are VZ grips. And these ones are not, um, they're medium um, in their aggressiveness. And also it has this, what they call a super scoop. You can get a scoop, a scoop or a super scoop. And I didn't know anything. Jim said, yeah, sure, go ahead, get the scoop. We didn't have a clue. And that actually, I didn't need to get that at all because when I fire, I rest my thumb on the safety, and so it doesn't even sit there. And then when I go to do a mag change, I have to flip the gun because my thumb won't hit the mag release. I actually have to flip my gun and turn it sideways anyway to get that mag release. So let me demonstrate it from here because I think I've better angle the camera. What you do is you flip the gun, push it into your th thumb. Mm -hmm. You push the gun yeah. into it. Eject the mag, mm -hmm. put another magazine in, force yeah. slide forward, and you're good to go. Yes. So that might make a little bit of difference in this, but not enough. Not for enough for... The Super Scoop costs extra. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And I can't remember if it was 15 bucks extra or something. I thought it was like 5 I can't 10, remember. I don't remember. But yeah. 
if you can see that, it's eh, not worth it. Yeah. Um, most of them do come with, here's one, the Specialist. It comes just with a regular. It's a magazine release scoop. Yeah. So it's not as big. Um, so second that gun. was the second gun I got was my EMP. And it is also Springfield Armory. It's in um, 9 millimeter. And I got this actually thinking that I wanted to use it for um, concealed carry, I think, at yep, first when I, when I was looking into it. And um, You have carried it a few times. I have, yeah. It, but it just was a little bit too big. I didn't want to carry it on my body. I would carry it in a purse. And so we have used it um, competitively, and it also came with the nice plain rosewood grips. And, and so, they don't even say anything like EMP on it, at least. No, at least those. At least these said, you know, RO Compact. Yeah, yeah. God, come on, Springfield. Yeah. So, at the price you charge for that gun, it should say EMP on it. We swapped out the grips. Um, the grips I originally swapped them out with were, yeah, these. these they, in you can, if you can see right, oh, let me see, right there when the light hits it, just right, they were kind of green, but every time we cleaned the gun, they got darker and darker and darker, so they look now almost black unless the light is shining on them at the right angle, and they're, they were just too smooth. Yeah, too smooth. Wait, that was the main thing. I can deal with the color, um, but... The, they are just way too smooth for competition. Yep. So uh, we looked and we got these from Stoner and um, I got them because he liked the color green and I Come on, did. you can't argue with alien green. <laughs> Come on, that's a zombie gun. And he was wanting to shoot it a little bit more in competitions and so... We've had a few issues with this gun so neither one of us carries it now for concealed carry because the last time we shot it at... Uh, a range this plug broke and the guide rod spring went down range and that's happened once before because it's a two-piece guide rod and yeah, we've had just some issues with it not to mention the titanium uh, firing spring or firing pin in there that sometimes won't set off an, a round of ammo and you get a no-go boom that really sucks in the middle of a match in fact it's unacceptable but right now it's just a fun gun until it it's all fixed. It's all fixed. We but just for have how to long? gain our confidence in it. Yeah. How long till this plug breaks again? Because I don't. I th I'm thinking the steel is rather of dubious quality because it just fractured and broke in half. And you were shooting it at the range and I actually caught it on video. Yeah. Where you can see the pieces, pieces. going down the range yeah. and yeah. the guys at the range we shoot at were kind enough to, after closing hours to pick up the part and they called us the next day and said, hey, we got part of your gun here. <laughs> At your pieces. Okay. I got to say though, Springfield Armory did stand behind it. They mm -hmm. sent us a new plug and complete guide pro, our guide rod assembly. Yeah. So that was pretty cool because these are worth about what five thousand rounds, and you need to change them. Mm -hmm. So we got another five thousand rounds to go on this gun, but just don't feel real confident in it yet. But anyway, we got the grips sorted out, and these are a pretty good compromise, I think. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely um, they're just a little bit bumpy on the front. And then the the back part is diagonaled, um, not not as not as what or crazy of an angle as that. Yeah, this one is is at an angle, sharp and angle. it's very sharp. Yeah, and and I can understand it. It does put your hand in the right position when you're actually drawing it, uh, but this one does also get oops, wrong one, sorry. Does get your hand right in there where it needs to be, so it, those little slats actually guide your hand where it needs to go when you're actually drawing and um, they works really good um, so now we're going to go from the thinnest set of 1911 the thinnest 1911 this is just 1911 a1 it's also a Springfield it is 1.140 and what's that one? Oh, this is the Dan Wesson Guardian and this is 1.295. It's a lot, it's a lot thicker. thicker. But it's a bobtail, so they feel completely yeah. different. This is borderline being too thin for me. Yeah, well, and these are really aggressive, yeah. too. I like it because that gun is yeah. only 29 ounces. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And you need a lot of control over that gun to shoot in competition. Yeah. Yeah. This is just a total pussycat to shoot. It just kind of goes poof, poof, poof. Yeah. But that's. Uh, if you can see the difference, it's hard to show on camera. Mm. But they're they're radically different. I think that shows it pretty good. Yeah, because you can see how it's kind of this wider is a much, right there. This has a much rounder profile. This one does. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm looking at it backwards on the monitor. Yeah. This one has a much rounder profile. This is the Guardian. It is a set of cheese graters extreme. Mm -hmm. If you have soft hands, don't shoot this gun. No. That this is one is the one that's 1.140 inches. Very narrow. And these, these are also from Stoner. They're the same style as what's on this gun, the EMP. They're the same style of grip. Uh, but this is actually thinner yeah. than the 9mm. This 45 is actually thinner than this guy. And this guy has a magwell on it, yep. so it makes might look a little fatter. But Magwell. Just think, just popped into my head, hey, what's a magwell? People might not know. When you are competing, that is that is no magwell. No when, at all. When you are competing, you have to switch mags very quickly. The magazine is the thing that holds your ammo. And when you take it out and pull it in, put it in, sometimes you're fishing around trying to get it in the right spot, a magwell just is a little bit more help to get the magazine yeah, to tapered. go in. They're tapered a little bit. So it kind of guides the And magazine. it guides it in there and you can smack it right in there. So it just yep. is a little easier. You can see how the edges are tapered to guide that in. And you'll have to check your rules for whatever discipline you're shooting to see if magwells are legal mm -hmm. and it still has to fit in the size requirements. Yeah. For IDPA, it's a box for each class that it has to fit in. This will fit. Okay, so that's guns that you can easily change the grip on. Yeah. Uh, well, we got a couple left here. Oh, yes, my, my little... That was your, th I want to say, third gun you bought? Yes. One, two, three. This is the third gun I bought. This is my SIG P238. It's a 380. This is my everyday carry gun. Um, I got this after I got this, because this was too big, like I said, to carry on my body. This little guy goes in my pocket. I have a little holster. We'll talk about holsters in That's another, be another episode. episode. Yeah, um, I uh, carry this in a. Uh, it's called a sticky holster, and it just slides in my pocket, and I can draw, and the holster, the sticky holster stays in there, and it works really well. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, this also came with. Um, rosewood rose grips. Wood grips, and I have them on there for a long, long time. And then we talked about using this gun for a pickup stage in one of our matches. What's a pickup stage? A pickup stage is when the match director decides to have a gun that doesn't belong to any of the shooters, that they're not using it in the match. And it's just, it's either sitting on a barrel or a table, and every single person that shoots that stage has to pick up this unfamiliar gun and shoot it at whatever it might be, you know, only three shots and then put it down and use their own gun. It just depends on what the stage instructions are. And I thought, well, hey, why don't I get some prettier grips than just the other ones? And these ones on, were just some girly grips. girly grips. These ones are pink and black, and I got them on sale because they were in the nobody wanted Who makes section. Those? These ones are also VZ grips. Cool. Yeah. So uh, they they work really good. They have a little bit of texturing right here to make it nice and aggressive. And I thought it would be really nice to have a big You just want to get some big hairy burly monster guy <laughs> on video shooting a pink gun. A very tiny pink gun. Yeah, because this would be, it's really difficult for a guy to get his hand on So it's that. kind of role reversal. Yeah, it is. Instead of you trying to stretch your hand to get a bigger gun, mm -hmm. they have to try and cram their big ape hands into a small gun. Yes, and that's not easy for them. It's very entertaining to watch. So on a similar note, what is, this is a, what, a 938? That is your, yeah, SIG P938. And if you can tell, try to get the right angle on this, the difference in width is what? Okay, the SIG P238 is 0 
And the 938, which is a 9 millimeter, is 1.255. That's a drastic difference in width. It is very, and these are called Hogue style grips. It's more of a rubber um, type grip, and you can see where the um, fingers are molded, and it's got a little bit of a bumpy texture to it. It's okay, but a lot of times with whole grips, they are the bumpies are in the wrong spot for your fingers. Well, depending on your hand size, sure. It does. It depends on your hand size. They're okay for me. I just don't like his gun. I just he changed the trigger. He's got that flat. I don't that's like a Galloway trigger. Come I on. don't like flat triggers. So anyway, but that's that one. They really don't feel anything alike, even though they're similar weight. A lot of the internal parts are the same. They both got the same uh, hammer spring in them. It's a reduced spring to lighten up the triggers. Mm -hmm. As they come from the factory, the triggers are fairly heavy. Yeah. But they they feel nothing alike, I have to say. No. He doesn't like shooting this. It's I, I made have, him shoot it I in have a shot match. that in a match. Yes. He did, did very well. I did quite respectable with yeah. it. <laughs> but the best thing is you can do is try them and... Keep in mind that if you can change the grips, you can change the way a gun feels. Yeah, definitely. Completely change it. You can. And so um, we move on to the Walther. Which this one is, is that? My, this is my Walther PPQ5 Match. It's in 9mm. Um, I have had it Cerakoted, um, so it looks a lot different than the Walthers that you see out of the box. Um, it is not a steel. This is just the regular poly frame. I cannot shoot the steel uh, because my hands are too small. They do not have any kind of adjustment on the grip for the steel. Uh, for this one, they come with three what they call back straps. This is the medium size. What's on here is the small and then there's a larger one. Uh, the small was actually still too big for my hand. In order to shoot the um, PPQ5 match, you have to be right on the trigger in order well, to... I'll demonstrate it from here. Yeah. This right there is your safety. And if you can't get around on the safety because your hand is too small, the gun will not fire. You have to get right here for it to fire. So if you're doing a pickup stage with your support hand and you're not fitting the gun especially well, you're going to run into this a lot. It's really frustrating when the gun doesn't go boom. Yes. I've seen it happen a couple times. Yes. And with my small hands, in order to shoot this gun, if I was to hold the gun properly the way you're supposed to, I cannot pull that trigger. I can't get on that safety word the way I'm supposed to. So I have to adjust my hands slightly so I can get a good grip on that trigger. That is why he sanded this down a little bit. And still, I still have to do that adjustment. So, from there... Well, we got to give a plug-in to oh, Eugene. Oh, Eugene, yes. Our, Eugene Wu, our... Our local Walther rep. Yes, he is awesome. He um, gave me the email address and the part, the number. part number for to, the, order. Um, to order a small backstrap. So, just in case he just messed up... Just in case up, I totally ruined it. Yeah, we... Had another one, but he didn't. He did awesome, so we have an extra. And, and I don't know if I can take that down much further, but it did make a difference. It did. It did make a difference, yeah. You ha running into that situation happened a lot less often. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. It's just one of those things that you have to deal with because... Yeah, my hands are a little bit smaller. Bit. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't make guns, especially for... Five foot three females. No. They're starting to. They're starting. They're starting to, to get a clue. They are getting better. That they but have a market it doesn't there. matter. Everybody's hands are different. Yeah, and you can be five foot three with long, hand, long yeah, fingers. You, it doesn't it, matter. It doesn't matter. You're gonna have to search and search for what works for what you. What works for you. Not everything's gonna be. So perfect. what was it we were saying? There is no such thing as a perfect gun right out of the box. Yeah, that's what we said. You're gonna have to change something or yeah, something. Well, it may come with black on black sights. It may yeah. come with crappy grips. This one I think is about the only one that we really haven't had to change anything on except for the grips. Well, we did change out the hammer string to lighten up the trigger pull. Right. Yeah. That's just because that's you it. become that's a trigger snob. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Bad. So what's this guy? That is my Smith and Wesson Model 66. Those are pretty fancy grips. Yeah, those are also VZ grips. Well, what came with this gun? This 
Hogue style rubber. And it was okay. It was fine. It fits my hand fine. Um, it just, if I did, com and I did start competing with this. I think I did two matches with yeah, you this. Did. Um, you did pretty good. Yeah, it, it just, ha I needed something with a little bit more aggressiveness to it. And I can, these ones, this one here, it, um, the rubber goes all the way around. So the, it covers the, the back strap. The back strap. And where this one does not. So I can actually get closer to my trigger and higher up on the gun where you want to be and be able to pull that much easier. And since you're shooting 38s in competition, your recoil is not a big consideration. Yeah. Between having the back strap covered with rubber or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but it gave me a little bit more aggressiveness just in case if my hands were wet or whatever. And you have shot magnums with those grips on and it didn't seem yeah, to bother you. Yeah, it didn't bother me. Because it fits your hand. Yeah. It if it doesn't fit your hand, what's it going to do? It's going to hurt. Yes. What yeah. fun is that? It's not fun. Are you going to learn to shoot that way? No. Not in your, in your back of your mind, this is going to hurt, hurt every this stinking time hurt. I fire this gun. That's right. And you're not going to want to practice You're going to flinch. It. You're going to do all kinds of bad yeah. habits. Yeah. So um, that's one thing with your grip. If you have a gun and your hand hurts, it might not be the grip itself. It might be that you're not holding your gun tight enough. It's a combination of It factors. is a combination. And you just got to figure out what is best for you. And having somebody that, that shoots and is familiar with how you're supposed to hold the gun, that's helpful to have them there to give you input. Because sometimes it might just be, hey, maybe push a little tighter with that left hand and push in on it. And that gives you a better grip on it. You and it know. also depends on what caliber you're shooting. If I'm shooting heavy 45 Colt, 360, 340 grain loads, or 4570 with 500 grain loads, I don't try and stand up to it. I can't. I let the gun push, and then I bring it back down. Yeah. I don't try and, uh, you're not going to move me because no. yeah. you're going to break your hand. Yeah. Or you're going to be so sore across here that you won't want to fire the gun in a month. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's actually guys that have tried with that 4570 that have ended up with fractures in their hands. You have sometimes have to learn how to roll with the gun, especially yeah. for the hard-kicking magnums. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on what you're shooting. Yeah. Uh, typically in competition, we don't shoot magnums. No. Unless you're shooting like uh, metallic silhouette where you have to have a lot of knockdown power to hit the steel outline of a buffalo or whatever, and you have to knock it over. Yeah, but that's usually not... But the then, and then you're not sure. shooting as fast as you can. You have a time limit. So it depends on what game you're, you're playing. Yeah. Hey, I just went to our next gun. Yeah, you did. So what's up with this one? Okay, this is my Rhino. Chiapa Rhino. <laughs> Am I doing that right, Joey? Yeah, that's for Joey. <laughs> um, it is a uh, 357 38 special, and I've talked about this a lot before. Um, it yeah. does have... Um, just the plain wood grip and it's it's fairly smooth as I've said before we put this grip tape on it to give me a little bit more um, control over the gun so it doesn't slip out of my hand but it still has the issue like the wall there on the edge I'm on the edge I have to tip my fingers in a little bit like this in order not my fingers but my my hand tip my hand this way to get that finger on the trigger so, we thought, well, let's get another grip from Chiapa, and Jim's going to um, modify it kind of like he did the Walther. No, it's kind of a round, it's kind of a round profile. I'm going to flatten out the edges this way, and then I'll take this area down some to where it puts her palm closer to the trigger. And it doesn't take much when you're talking about a circumference to move you forward. And just a little bit can make a tremendous yeah. difference. So we'll see how that works. And look what I got. That's just so I won't shoot it. Pink grip tape. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Roxy. <laughs> you scared the dog. So sometimes you won't have an off-the-shelf solution. No. Sometimes you have to make your own solution. Yeah. Sometimes you have to make your own solution, mm -hmm. like with this Walther. Right, yeah. There is no such thing as a perfect gun out of the box. Mm -hmm. Even our friend who has an expensive Les Bear, mm -hmm. the profile of the safety beats him up. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So he's got to change that on a very expensive gun. Yeah. You can spend a whole lot of money. You can spend 5K on a gun and you have to change something. And, and you don't really know until you actually shoot that gun for a period of time. You can go and go to a range and mm -hmm. shoot a gun. Oh, what? Put, man, put 50, a, 100 put, rounds? Put a box of ammo through it and yeah. say, yeah, that's good. And that's good and you're fine. But if you're shooting a match, which is... You're not shooting around barriers at weird angles. You're not shooting under barriers. You're not barriers. drawing because yes. they don't let you draw. In most ranges. Yeah, and so that puts your hand in a totally... Because you are you can get everything right and adjustable. And you don't know until you've shot it for under, several hundred. When you're under match pressure. Yeah. And you may not have that optimum grip on the gun. Mm -hmm. That's when things start showing up that, oh man, i got to change that. Yeah, that's not going uh, It work. happened to me with this gun. With old slab sides, I had put some grip tape on the gun, and what I actually found was when I was doing my mag changes, it was actually slowing me down because my hands were sticking, and I couldn't rotate the gun as fast mm -hmm. to get the magazine out. Yeah. So in that case, it actually slowed me down more than having a smooth uh, front strap on this gun. It's absolutely smooth. There is no checkering on it. Yeah. And that tape actually slowed me down. I was sitting here, come, come on. And get. see, that's what he had to make the gun work for him. Now, for me, I probably would have needed that extra just to keep my hand where it needs to be when I'm shooting. Well, and, that, and when you rotate the gun, how much do you have grip here? Yeah. What mm -hmm. happens if you drop a gun during a match? Mm, you're out. You're hitting the shower. Yeah. Because you're done for the day. Yeah. So it just depends on... It's a whole combination of things. It is. You don't think about that stuff just plinking, mm -mm. necessarily. No. And when you're just shooting at the range, you're, you know, once a month... Mm -hmm. You know, 50 rounds or whatever. Because you're typically not shooting fast. And yeah. if you are shooting fast, usually you're just blowing ammo off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're shooting for a score in a match, everything tends to come mm -hmm. together. And I would, I would recommend anybody and everybody start shooting matches. Just go to your local ASI. And uh, I'll put information in the link on this gun of, on ASI. Action Shooters International. Great place to learn how to shoot competitively. And not just competitively. How to be competent with a gun. Yes. And safe with a gun, above all. And awareness. It you also can, teaches you awareness. Situational awareness. You can shoot at your own pace. You don't even have to have a uh, holster to shoot in a match. You can glove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that brings us to our future videos. So future we, videos? Yeah. What yeah, do we got planned? Uh, like. Well, number one, we plan for me to be out of the videos as soon as this kernel crap. Quarantine is over. He keeps saying that, but I'll, I need him I'll here be behind the camera. To be throwing questions at me. Um, buying your first gun. That's going to be a good one. Yeah. Because I was there with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I saw the struggles. I saw the confusion. Yep. And there's so much, and you're so overwhelmed. Knowing you, the difference in calibers, you just, this is a 22, this is a 45, this is a, you have no idea. Well, how can you shoot a 38 caliber and a 357 caliber in the same gun? Well, yeah. because that's called a 38 special. Right, huh? It's the same caliber. Well, why don't they just call it, you know, it's... It, why don't they call it a 357 special? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why don't they call it a 38 Magnum, for goodness sake? Yeah. I still don't understand half of what there is to understand about ammo. Um, uh, next, um... So you want to compete? What next? Uh, we'll, we uh, had a journey on that. Yeah, we'll go ahead and dedicate a little video and show you how to get plugged in if you do want to compete and I what you can do. It. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. We have met some lifelong friends. Yeah, but people that we now call our extended right. family mm -hmm. through the shooting sports. Yeah, uh, customer service, box stores versus your local gun shop versus the actual gun companies themselves. Yes, yes. And then gear for women, belts, holsters, that kind of thing. I'm out of that one. And that that long, long, unending journey. Yeah, we'll have to have some of the other girls sit in and yes. help you out mm -hmm. with that one because I can't relate. No, you can't at all. Well, just put the gun down lower on your hip for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, I got chewed out over that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, why can't you pull from your left side? Well, why can't you pull from your right side? What's the problem? There's things that are in the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid male, what can I say? Oh, yeah, yeah, I had a crew cut by when this corona crap started, so... Yeah, and look what happened. Yeah, yeah man, it's terrible. Hasn't been able to get his hair cut. I haven't been able to get a haircut. <laughs> All right, so I guess I that's it for this done. one. Yes. So, what, to recap it, 
no perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect gun out of the box. No, no. But you can change things. Right, yeah. That, we just talked about grips today. Um, sights is another thing that you would probably change. That could be a whole... Yeah, that could be a whole different... Yeah, because most of the guns that I have gotten, I've changed the sights on. That I could. There's... Well, when you buy a $1,500 gun and the sights are black on black, that doesn't work for competition. No. It does not. It might work for a bowling pin, which is white, but <laughs> yeah. that's about it. That's about it, yep. Okay, so we'll see yeah. you next time. I guess. All right, yeah. Bye. Ciao. Oh, down. Squeeze the trigger. Yeah.